Cascadia does indeed produce very, very large earthquakes, perhaps even giant earthquakes. There's an unholy trinity of earthquake sources here. Well, we have these deep Benioff zone earthquakes. It's my belief at that point that the tower would collapse and I would most likely perish. The tower is collapsing, I say again, the tower is falling apart. But we have a very complex um, crustal earthquake problem. The Portland Hills Fault runs right through downtown Portland. The Seattle Fault runs right through downtown Seattle. We will have a lot of, of widespread construction. We'll have pieces of the area that will unfortunately look like Kobe. And then the big Cascadia subduction zone earthquakes. It's going to affect the entire Pacific Northwest, from Vancouver Island to Northern California. The ground is going to shake for two to four minutes along the I-5 corridor. It'll be an enormous event. It will be accompanied probably by a seismic sea wave or a tsunami. There will be severe damage and loss of life, much as the Alaskan earthquake did in 1964. It's just totally awesome, uncontrolled power. Truly thought, well, this is the end of the world. These losses are so large that they would affect the entire social fabric of the Northwest. shook and kept on shaking. I just ran along with everybody else down the back stairs. In just 30 seconds, the 6.8 Nisqually earthquake injured hundreds of people, damaged thousands of homes, and caused almost $2 billion worth of damage to Western Washington. But this earthquake only hints at the region's vulnerability to seismic catastrophe. Nearly two decades of research reveal that Cascadia will experience earthquakes as large as humans have ever witnessed. Scientists say the next giant earthquake could strike at any time. It will rattle an area 700 miles long, from Northern California to Southern British Columbia. The shaking will affect all the major population centers, Vancouver, Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia, Portland, Eugene, and all of them will undergo a considerable amount of damage. This worst case scenario is part of a seismic triple threat facing Cascadia. Besides a massive region-wide subduction zone earthquake, new evidence reveals that dozens of shallow faults could cause catastrophic damage in metropolitan areas. Deep earthquakes like the 2001 Nisqually event make up the third part of this triple threat. They're the least damaging, but most common. One of the problems with the Nisqually earthquake was um, that uh, it was a wake-up call, but in a sense, I think people got the wrong message from it. Because nobody lost their lives, and the damage was not major. And I think people um, came to the conclusion that the safeguards that were in place were adequate. But in effect, uh, they did not get the earthquake that they have to plan for. What people have seen isn't anything compared to what they'll see if the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake goes on up the west coast, or if something like a major fault, like the Seattle Fault, slips under a major metropolitan area like Seattle. Scientists have long known that Cascadia was a landscape shaped by geological catastrophes, by mile-thick lava flows, floods of biblical scale, gigantic volcanic eruptions, 
and tectonic forces that heaved the seafloor skyward into jagged mountains. 1949 and 1965 earthquakes in the Puget Sound region hinted that Cascadia is a restless place. But by and large, the geological upheavals that created Cascadia's major landforms seemed remote, buried under epochs of time. The Earth has been deceptively benevolent since Lewis and Clark first explored the area 200 years ago. Our assessment at the time was that we couldn't imagine anything more uh, troubling than a repeat of the 1949 earthquake. But we, we discounted big crustal faults in Puget Sound for a variety of reasons, and we pretty much said that we didn't think that the Cascadia subduction zone was active. But in 1980, a picturesque mountain in southwest Washington blew away the notion that Cascadia is off limits to geologic calamity. On May 18th, Mount St. Helens exploded with the force of 27,000 atom bombs. It flattened enough trees to build a half million homes, killed 57 people, sent a plume of ash around the earth, and gouged out a crater 2,000 feet deep and more than a mile wide. That awareness began with Mount St. Helens. It really started to connect people with the fact that 